This video was not in the first place meant to prove that the earth is flat. In the beginning my main purpose was instead to show you how refraction works in different circumstances when we have water vapor in the air. The distance to the lighthouse is 7.2 kilometers, and the height of camera lens is approximately 2.5 meters. Please, pay attention to how the atmosphere ripples and distorts the landscape. There is a lot of water vapor in the air. A lot of it will raise higher up and will eventually become clouds. Some of it will not raise high enough, but will rather fall back to the sea, even though you will not necessarily observe it as normal rain. That is one of the reasons why we often can see more refraction near the surface of the sea than higher up. The evaporating water causes the refraction when the solar photons, which is electromagnetic radiation, hit the water molecules in the air. This clip is from a, another video, filmed just a few minutes after the first video. The distance is very close the same as earlier. But now the height of the lens is closer the water surface, about 1.05 meters. Since we are closer the surface now, the bending of light is more eminent than earlier. We have a bit more refraction in this example. The more water molecules you have between the target and the lens, the more you experience refraction. We will now compare some sections of the two videos and notice that the eye level is often an essential thing to take into consideration when we are experiencing the effect of the refraction. Higher observation altitude often means less water molecules in the air between the camera lens and the target filmed. Therefore it also often means less refraction. The right side is slightly better because of higher altitude and less distortion. Did you know that the water vapor in the air can cause not only refraction, but can also act as a magnifying glass. The magnifying can cause objects far away to partly disappear underneath the visible horizon, even if they are not. Because of this, some people think and teach that the object is partly behind the so-called curved water. Let's have a closer look in this subject. We will now have a look at some photos of the same lighthouse as earlier, but from a different location. They are all taken by me, Pete. This Finnish lighthouse is called Soderskaren Majaka. It was filmed from this location. Next four photos are shot very close to 0.94 meters above sea level. The distance from the camera to the lighthouse is 18.84 kilometers. The highest point of the lighthouse is 40 meter above the sea level. Please, forget the tides, since here in Finland it is close to zero. When you look at the photos, please remember this, if we live on a globe, the obscured height, because of the curved water, 
should be 18.56 meters when the lens are 0.94 meter above the sea level. This according to the different calculators. That is nearly half of the height from the water level to the top of the lighthouse. The obscured height should be behind the visible horizon. You have now seen some examples of that the refractive power is not always the same, since some days the lighthouse appear to be more behind the curvy earth, and other days we can see everything which was earlier hidden from our sight. Therefore, we shall now make further examination of this subject by making scientific experiments. The water vapor in the air are acting as a magnifier. Some days it is forcing the bottom of the lighthouse to bend downwards, even if there is a flat surface at the front of it. Think it this way. The table is the water surface, the magnifying sheet is the water vapor in the air, and the ruler is the lighthouse. Let's mount it up. Now we are starting to get more refraction. And now less refraction. The cheeky ones can now say that we see 2.5 centimeters because of the refraction and what we see is not true. But that is nonsense since we now have less refraction. I would rather say that now we have not much refraction, and therefore, the picture here is clearer than the other. Instead, now we have much more refraction, which means we have more bending of the light, and therefore, a. the ruler is not so clear, and b. the visible lower part of the ruler is forced downwards. If we compare them side by side, here we have less refraction. And here we have more refraction. More refraction means that the bottom of the target is moving downwards, out of sight. Trust me when I say it. It is an illusion. What you have between 12 and 25 millimeters is not behind a curvature. Globe believers, say that we can see this much because of the refraction. They further believe that what we see here is the real thing because of the curvature. Instead of using a ruler as the lighthouse, let's use a printed photo instead. Indeed, the refraction is not a friend when you are trying to prove that the water is not curved. It is like this, mainly because the refraction cause first the bottom of the target to disappear behind the visible horizon. Let us compare again. When you compare the photos you can clearly see, that when there are better weather conditions the visible horizon is further away, and you can see water even behind the island. This is a normal progress when you are starting to have less water vapor in the air. The same phenomenon can also be seen in videos of the same lighthouse. Here you can't see the buildings. I don't know what the zoom is but it is clearly less than 83 times optical. However, 
I know that the distance to the lighthouse is 18.4 km, and the lens is max 94 cm above the sea level. Are there hidden buildings on the right side of the lighthouse because of the curvature? Let's see if we can zoom in a bit closer. There are no buildings seen on the right side of the lighthouse, and even the island is hidden. Not because of the curvature, but because of the atmospheric lensing. The next clip is filmed in a different day, slightly in a different location, a bit further away. You can see that the horizon is behind the island and therefore this is not a mirage. This is real stuff. Let us now be more practical and demonstrate how the refraction is acting like a magnifying glass in nature. The more water vapor we have between the camera and the object filmed, the more magnifying we will get. I will now show you a time lapse video. I filmed it for 25 minutes and the camera took one photo every sixth second. This means it has 250 photos put together. The length is only 10 seconds. Concentrate on the big rock in the water. The distance to the rock is only 1.54 kilometers. The size of it will constantly change even though the zoom was the same all the time, and the camera had no movements at all. Did you see that the size of the rock was changing? Let's have a look one more time. Did you notice that the visible lower edge of the rock was forced downwards while the upper portion was forced to move upwards? It happened because of the atmospheric lensing thanks to the refraction. It happened in the same way as in this earlier example, where the magnifying effect forced the visible lower edge of the ruler downwards. Now we are starting to get more refraction. And now less refraction. Let's go back to the rock for a while. I will now add a grid to the front of the rock, so it will be more eminent for you, that the bending of the light are moving the rock to all directions, and even changing the size. Let's loop the clip forward and backward a couple of times. Let us now have a look at how the refraction is stronger where there are no ice, compared to the area where there is ice cover. On the photo it seems that the refraction is not so bad where you have ice cover. The ice is in solid state, 
and don't cause as much refraction as liquid water, since it takes more time for the ice to become gas. Let's take a better example. Pay attention to how dramatically the sea level can rise up behind the ice cap. It looks like an upright water wall. But that is just an illusion. It is caused by the evaporating water in the air behind the ice cap. <laughs>